Hello, good evening and welcome to The Little Farmer's Farm with me, Guru Mafinda. Now, on today's exciting episode, we're hoping to uh, get plenty of little tasks done down at the allotment. Um, planning on doing, starting some beans off, some uh, broad beans, because I haven't started them yet. We're a bit late, actually, with those. Uh, we're also going to be starting some onward peas, which are nice, sweet, succulent little peas. And there'll be a special way that we're going to be doing that today. Also, we've got, I want to raise the bed, or one of the beds in the little Lady Farmer's um, 12 by 8 polytunnel, the new one that we've created, and fill up a couple of beds, do a bit of harvesting, and that kind of thing. Plenty to go out today, so uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing if you're already a subscriber please don't forget to comment like and hit the bell notification button if you haven't already and uh, remember we love you all and i'll catch you later on all right boys and girls let's go and see me brother below up at the plots Mwah! so we're just checking on our overwintering cauliflowers and i don't want them to end up like that one because that one's going so I have got one, which is this one, that looks a nice, nice little uh, florette there. Uh, perfect little florette, actually, inside that cauliflower. A lot of the leaves are okay. They're pretty, pretty good, the leaves. So we can take those, and I'm going to take that. So I'm going to start taking the, in fact, I will take these cauliflowers out, I think, now. Here we go. Here's my little mate. So we'll be eating that tonight, for sure. That's rocky up at the top, that. Building his next chapel. I think he's going for a cathedral this time. So these new beds that we've created um, for the potatoes this year, these two, I've already filled that one up, but I need to get that one filled up. Now compost can get to be quite expensive. So uh, we are creating our own compost up at the top in, uh, in those three bins and also we've got the compost corral as well but they're not quite ready yet. But I do have growing medium in here, the failed bean and pea experiment for overwintering. <laughs> Such a good idea, never worked, but I'm going to get that... Um, compost out of there and chuck it into the into the big uh, potato beds I'll have a rummage round as well and see if I've got anything else I can throw in okay so there's about a hundred litres altogether of soil there and we've got to get it into there so let's do that okay so that's those three bucketfuls those are 30 litre buckets so there's 90 litres gone in there I'm gonna need probably about another another four of those buckets about another 120 litres I would, I would guess now before we put tiki tunnel 2 up which is this the old pumpkin bed was around here and we emptied it that's the old pumpkin bed and that was uh, 12 inches high 8 feet long and 4 feet wide and we put it all into the into the 30 litre buckets which are down there, so I've actually got quite a bit of soil here and it's relatively good stuff that because it's got the um, it was like a half and half mixture of the compost and the horse manure so that's not going to be too bad I'm going to put that, these four at least into the uh, new bed and there it is, all full up or oh, more or less to the brim like that one Let's see if we can salvage some of these beetroots that have been in over winter. Might be able to get a few out of it. There's enough for a small feed there. Nobody else likes cooked beetroot, but I do. We had the white ones and we had the red ones in. So they'll do. Okay, so let's get back in the brand new grow tunnel the brand new poly grow tunnel the lady farmers one tiki tunnel too now hopefully you can see there that uh, about two thirds of the bed on the left hand side i've raised it up by another four inches 
So we're going to have a quite deep grow bed there. It's about 10 inches of a grow bed for the tomatoes and cucumbers that are going to be going in. I'm going to be raising this bed as well eventually um, using the old um, timber from uh, what was it called? The pumpkin bed. That's going to go on that side. But yeah, I'm going to raise that up. Now, I need to add some amendments into that because it's just burr and barren and sterile uh, compost material that's in there now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some um, blood fish and bone in the mix. Two cupfuls per meter square. So, that's going to take six cupfuls all mixed in with the compost mix and then there'll be some food in there there'll be some uh, potassium phosphorus nitrogen that's going to be getting into the mix there just to give the plants a good start uh, and obviously we're going to be using the magic comfrey through the growing season the com the, the, the comfrey um, feed liquid feed that's going to be going in there as the plants develop but uh, yeah i'm just going to uh, as i say i'm going to amend the soil if you like and just get some nutrition in there all right, boys and girls, so that's the blood fish and bone, and that's the cup, so six of those cups are going to go in to that three-metre square bed of that. Let's get it on. All right, now there's a cup full. Give that a good sprinkling in. I want to get a relatively even mix throughout the growing medium. So uh, that's what we're going to try and do. I'll be mixing all this together by hand because I'm crazy like that and try and get it as integrated into the mix as we possibly can. All right. That's the third cup going in. Is it night on Burr Mountain that? This is the last one going in. It'll all be mixed through, through the 10 inches of depth and levelled off. The jobs are good. All right, now there's about three pounds worth of that there, now in there, three quid's worth of blood, fish and bone. So let's get it all mixed up together. Oh, yes. It's had a good mix and a massage, that, with the tickly hands. It's all relaxed and, uh, and happy now, that. I didn't give it a happy ending, obviously, but uh, it's all flat. I brushed it as well. A little trick for brushing it. So I can get it level. Just the weight of the brush and you draw that across. And uh, it levels it all out. Right, that's uh, ready to receive now. That's 10 inches deep. 3 foot by 12 foot. Well, ish. It's probably 10 feet, actually, that. Something like that. I'll measure it, actually. See what it is. So I've measured it, and it's just short of nine feet by just short of three feet. Nine, 92 centimetres it was, weight wide. So it's just short of three feet, and it's round about um, eight foot ten in old money. Long or just short of nine. Right. Three metres. Hmm. All right. So it's the comfrey feed, the liquid comfrey feed, that we're going to be giving, in, giving to the tomatoes and the cucumbers. But for the brassicas, the nettle's better. Nettle feed. Have a look at the back catalogue. Organic feeds, organic fertilisers. It's in there. I'll put the link down below how to make it. So there's a seven litre watering can and uh, it's got water in it, water in it up until about uh, five and a half litres. I'm going to top that off now with the nettle feed. Just basically, if I carefully with one hand, pour in the magic. Uh, 
Okay, now that's about 20% uh, nettle feed. Or 25%-ish nettle feed to water. I'm going to give it a little bit of a stir now so it's all mixed through. And then I'm going to be feeding my brassicas with that. Now though, they're the brassicas, it's the purple sprouting broccoli you're looking at there. We've got some spring cabbage over there. Now I'm going to have to take these out of here because obviously if I do water them, uh, that was just a temporary measure to put them up there out of the way really to be honest with you. Got them out of the big um, polytunnel and put them in here. But they've been in there about two weeks and obviously they need a feed and they need a drink. So I'm going to have to sort something out for those. But um, we've got the winter boar kale there as well. So they're going to be uh, they're going to be getting a good um, a good liquid feed, a good dousing. Again, with that, I hadn't thought that through really, hundred percent, because it's in a tub in it, and I can't I can't water from the bottom in that. It's in one of the slug forts. That's a slug fort as well. That's not a slug fort that they're in, but hopefully, touch wood. We haven't had any slug issues thus far. It's a bit early for the slugs. But uh, yeah, I'm going to give them all a nice feed with that, uh, with that nettle tea. That's going to be the temporary home for the spring cabbages. That bed's had a bloody good watering. It's had about 20, 21 litres of water into the bed. It's only really a shallow bed. But with the cabbages already having the, the liquid feed, they've had about a litre and a half each of the liquid feed. So that will go down and the, and the moisture will go down and hopefully it will wick up as well from underneath because there's holes and obviously there's holes in the bottom of the buckets as well. So we're hoping we get some wicking action. But every time I come down, I think I'll be down a couple of times this week and I'll give it all a watering round and just, just get, them, uh, get them hydrated, you know what I mean? So uh, that's in the lady farmer's uh, tunnel, Tiki Tunnel 2. I've sort of part buried them under about three inches down the buckets and the holes are in the bottom. I've given it a thorough watering. I might give it another, another few litres so as it's a bit sodden. And then they can, uh, through capillary action, hopefully draw up the moisture from the soil. And also they've got the liquid feed on the top. So we'll see what happens with them. Because they've done well to last through the winter inside the greenhouse. So, uh, yeah. Might not get them to full cabbage-like fruition. And it's only a temporary measure, this. I think if this um, relatively mild weather keeps up, I might get them all outside and get them under a tent um, and see how we go from there. But, yeah, at the moment, they're looking nice, aren't they? They're not looking too bad. These leaves have been tucked inside the bucket, so, as you, as you see, you can pull them out like that, and they'll green up, hopefully. They, they won't, we won't lose those ones. A couple of the ones from around the base. We'll take those off. From around the base yeah we'll see how we go with them springies springy cabbages yeah hmm fingers crossed okay so we tend to water from the bottom and feed from the top when you're doing bucket bucket growing or container growing um, you can do them outside obviously but with them being indoors, certainly with tomatoes, that's what we do. We water from the bottom and feed from the top. It's just the way that a lot of people do it and they have success with it that way. So, you know, we're not going to try and reinvent the wheel. So we'll see how they get on. All right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to start off some peas, I think. Why not? Peas in gutters. Let's have a go. So there's an old three foot length of guttering, or just short of three foot. Other sizes are available, obviously, but that's just an old bit of guttering. And what we've done is an old uh, McDarby trick of um, putting these stoppers on the end. It's just expanding foam from expanded foam, uh, sorry, um, polystyrene from polystyrene boxes, uh, which I've cut to shape. And, uh, and are fixed in there with some zip ties. Now, that holds them pretty pretty sturdy and stable, to be honest with you. It tightens, you tighten your zip ties up. There are bits and pieces of gaps 
which is what you want. When you fill that up then with the compost um, and water the compost, the excess liquid can drain away. Now what I've done before in the past is drilled holes all along the bottom for the excess liquid to drain away and then put uh, tissue paper on top. But what we're doing here is just trying this. Jim, uh, sorry, not Jim. Mick has done that for the last couple of years and he's had good results. He's doing it right now at the moment. And uh, he's, had, he's had fine results from it. So I've just got the compost there. I've got a, bit of, a little bit of vermiculite in, only about 10% mix in the vermiculite. And I'm gonna fill all that up now with the compost mix and vermiculite. So there we have a nice little bed about an inch below um, the lip of the gutter into which we shall be placing some of those onward peas all right they're going to be going in there you want you want to look about an inch below the below the surface when you're putting them in so all i'm going to do now is i'm going to put them in in a uh, five spots on a dice configuration which i'll show you now Okie dokie, five spots on a dice configuration. 28 peas in there, onward peas. Now I got these for the lady farmer because they have a superb sweet taste to them. And you get about eight peas per pod and about 30 pods per plant, hopefully. All right, so uh, I'm gonna top that off with the compost now. Some people soak their peas overnight, but these are going to get soaked. They're going to get a good dousing, initial dousing, with plenty of water whilst in the ground. In nature, they wouldn't get soaked overnight, would they, boys and girls? So we'll see what we'll see how we get on. We've done it before in that method, and it and it works perfectly well. So I'm going to top that off now with the rest of the compost, and um, and that's one that's one gutter of peas done. A short gutter, but it uh, it illustrates the point, doesn't it? All right. Okay, so as I say, some people, normal people, soak their peas overnight. But I'm a maverick, and I'm going to instead give them a uh, give them a thoroughly good, a ruddy good dousing. Like that. And I might well, although I probably won't, um, put some more compost on top of that. But in fact, I don't think I need to. But what I do need to do is keep those out of the way of the pesky little mice, the measly meeses. All right, so that's floating now in mid-air. And you've just got the plastic uh, visqueen sheeting for the mice to climb up. And unless they've got suckers on the feet, you know, like cat burglars have when they're climbing up windows. Unless they've got those, I don't think they'll be able to get up there. Because I, I can't see any other... And it's the same with these smooth uh, metal tubes. I can't see them climbing up there. Uh, so that's out of the way. Now it was a little bit lower on that side, so I've just tucked a bit of that um, that hot spot tape underneath, just to level it up. So it shouldn't be dripping out of there shortly. It's, it's dripping out of there because I've only just put it underneath, to be honest with you, but that should be pretty level now. So, um, yeah, it's had a thoroughly good dousing. And uh, I'm going to leave that, just keep an eye on it. You don't want it drying out, uh, but you don't want it getting, getting too wet so that the peas rot. Again, it's a bit of a fine juggling act, boys and girls. But yeah, I like that. I like the idea of that. It's, uh, it's retained by that, but not too much. It can still come out, as you can see. It's still allowed for the excess water to come out. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully they'll stay in there until they're about three or four inches high, the little pea plants. And then what you do is you can take those end stops off, take it out of here, obviously, and then put it in, uh, put it into the ground wherever you want to, 
you want to put it. No amendments have gone into there. No nutrition has gone into there as yet. The pea will do the job until it gets to about that height. And then when we put it in the ground, we'll be putting, in, putting it into the ground where there's, um, where there's nutrition. We'll be adding nutrition to its final growing position. But that's a, a story for another day. So we're a little bit late with the broad beans as well. So I'm going to get some of those off and running. Um, I'll show you. So yeah, broad beans at Demonica, these ones. The earliest maturing spring sown bean. Won't be the earliest one on this plot because I'm a month late, really. Should have started those in February. As you can see there, you can sow them either late on in the year, October, November. Or you can start them off February to April. Well, up here in the frozen north, I think uh, March is about right, really, for starting them. They should do fine, those. A good source of vitamins A, C, E and protein. And I like them. I like beans. I like broad beans. So, yeah, we're going to get those started off. I'm, I'm probably going to do about 24. So I'm going to get... Um, how many of these have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Two to a pot. Sounds about right to me. We'll get that on. Now, with the broad beans... If you're doing them and starting them in pots, you want them a couple of inches down, or five centimetres, whichever you want to call it, uh, down into the pot and then top them off. So with the peas, it's an inch. With the beans, it's two inches. That's about two inches. We'll call that right. Um, I like to do it as a re relatively firm mix as well, so that the root... On, especially on top so that the roots go down and it doesn't push itself out of the ground too early get them nicely seated so that's what we're going to do let's get some seeds on so that's what the bean seed looks like the actual bean looks like now really it doesn't matter which way you put them in uh, but I usually put them down that way and I don't know whether it's the right way but I usually stick them in that way and push them down into the pot. Like that. I don't really think it matters, you know, too much. Because obviously when they're doing them, when the farmer's doing them, he's just scattering them, isn't he? I suppose. Um, or she. But they are two inches down. That's going to be topped off now with more compost. I haven't bothered filtering this either. With, with with the big beans, with the large beans, large seeds really, it's not as crucial, um, so I don't bother. Now, when I'm doing my cabbage seeds and things like that, I fine filter it and I put, um, I put about 30% vermiculite in. This has got about less than 10% vermiculite really in it, and it hasn't been filtered. So... Um, We'll see how we get on with that. I know at Paul Green they don't bother filtering it either. And they put about a 5 a five or 10% uh, vermiculite mix in. And if it's good enough for them, it's probably good enough for me, isn't it? All right, there they all are. Two in each, 12 pots, 24. Fingers crossed, 24 bean plants. They're going to be transferred now into the... Um, into the cold frame, which is actually not too cold of a frame because it's inside this polytunnel. And there they all are, right next to the uh, the Globo, which are the big seed onions that I'm starting off, or I've started off. Um, so yeah, they're going to be they're going to be in here until they burst through their britches, and um, we're not going to leave them in the water. Obviously, they're in there about an inch of water. I'm going to soak all that up. I'll give them a dousing from the top. They're going to soak it up. I may well leave them in for a couple of days and then just keep bobbing them in and out of the water. But it will retain moisture inside this. Um, let me just close it. So, yeah, it retains moisture inside that. You can see that it's a little bit steamy on the top. They'll come through the surface. As soon as they burst the surface, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to open that up a little bit, let some ventilation go through. I'm not going to be topping that up with water. I'll just be checking every now and again just to make sure it's still um, slightly moist, but not too not too wet. And, uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. All right. There's going to be more seeds going in there. 
more starts tomorrow I'll fill that up tomorrow actually with some start with starts because it's still as I say it's still quite it's um, still quite cold at night and um, so what you don't want is you don't want the, the the little plants to sort of freeze the bottoms off so that's why it's inside the the polytunnel and it's inside the the cold frame within the polytunnel at the moment yeah until sort of mid-April it doesn't really warm up significantly and even then sometimes not as i say last year we got a late frost we got a frost in um, the first week of may which did devastate quite a lot of things but you've got to work with nature haven't you boys and girls okay good old brother below there working with nature um if you enjoyed that please comment like subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and don't forget to hit the bell notification button if you're already a subscriber. So you don't miss another exciting episode with me and Belo down in Eden. Back tomorrow, we're going to get some more seeds started off tomorrow. I want to get stuck into the spinach. And also I'm going to be starting off the um, Pak Choi tomorrow. And maybe even some more beans and peas. The lady farmer loves peas. I like beans. I don't mind peas, but I, I like cooked peas, whereas she'll eat them straight out of the pod. That's why I've got the sweet ones there, the onward. But, uh, yeah, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you tomorrow. We love you all. Au revoir. Adieu. And good night. Bye-bye now. See you later on. Take care.